Hi everybody, it is April 24, 2018. I have come across two very important articles. I'm going to be addressing this article. Is electro smog harming our health? Electrical pollution from cell phones and Wi-Fi may be hazardous. This was posted on NBC News in 2010. NBC, all of the mainstream media outlets now, would never touch this. And I am amazed, I'm shocked, that NBC still has this on their website. I'm going to be reading a lot of this article. Very important, NBC News telling the truth about our Wi-Fi environment the dangers of microwave frequencies, electromagnetic frequencies that we are saturated in. And it is rather a, a lengthy article and in depth. They even, they even cite the bioinitiative report, which mainstream media, after they posted that article, mainstream media has come out and just called these scientists nut jobs. Okay, I will um, get into that article in just a few moments. This article, The Nation, just posted on April 23rd a very lengthy article based on an in-depth investigation of our telecommunications industry and the telecommunications industry has done what the tobacco industry has done. The telecommunications industry knows how dangerous are these uh, electromagnetic microwave frequencies. They know how dangerous it is to our health and all life and they've covered it up and they're lying to people. Now, I will post another video on this because I want to also introduce an awful lot of other information along with it. The disinformation campaign and massive radiation increase behind the 5G rollout. All right. Very important article. I will link to it below if you want to not listen to my video and just get a jump start on reading this and circulating it, I really uh, hope that you do. You'll find the link below. Um, you'll find the link below to this article. NBC News. So, for those who think that you're crazy, you're a conspiracy theorist, and you cannot get through to the people in your lives how dangerous this environment has become because of the saturation of these very dangerous frequencies. We are electromagnetic beings. We have frequencies within us, in our brain, and these frequencies cross the blood-brain barrier, but every cell in our body operates on a frequency. These frequencies, the external frequencies coming from our cell phones and gadgets and cell towers and Gwen towers, the Wi-Fi, these frequencies penetrate our bodies, affecting every cell in our body, and it is one of the main reasons why we have an exponential increase in disease, in, in illness, in syndromes. And here is NBC News pointing all of that out. So for those of you who, who have people in your life that are addicted to mainstream media, they believe that mainstream media is telling the truth and well everybody else is not give them this article is electro smog harming our health now I'm going to be reading a lot of this because I think it's it's just very very important information um, print this article out because my hunch if it gets attention suddenly you'll click on the link and get that 404 error. In 1990, now they talk about dirty electricity as well. In 1990, the city of La Quinta, California, 
open doors to a brand new middle school. Gail Cohen was a sixth grade teacher and everybody was really excited because that school, um, the teachers were teaching in temporary facilities for two years. So they were very happy finally getting a permanent building. Um, but soon after the school opened, one teacher developed vague symptoms, weakness, dizziness, and didn't return after the Christmas break. A couple of years later, another developed cancer and died. The teacher who took over his classroom was later diagnosed with throat cancer. More instructors continued to fall ill, and then in 2003, on Gail Cohen's 50th birthday, birthday, she got the news that she had breast cancer. By 2005, 16 staffers among the 137, they all had been diagnosed with a range of cancers, 18 cancers. There was a local newspaper article about this school and the cancers, the possible disease cluster. Well, it caught the attention of Sam Milham, a doctor, a widely traveled epidemiologist who has investigated hundreds of environmental and occupational illnesses, published dozens of peer-reviewed papers on his findings for the past 30 years that, well, obviously from 2010 back 30 years, he had trained much of his focus on the potential hazards of electromagnetic fields. The radiation that surrounds all electrical appliances and devices, power lines, and home wiring, and those emitted by communication devices, including cell phones and radio, TV, and Wi-Fi transmitters. His work has led him, along with an increasingly alarmed army of international scientists, to a controversial conclusion. The electrosmog that first began developing with the rollout of the electrical grid a century ago and now envelops every inhabitant of Earth is responsible for many of the diseases that impair or kill us. Now, the electrical grid that we had decades ago, there were instances where people were coming down with symptoms caused by dirty electricity. The electrical grid today with this wireless technology it has become so dangerous that there are so many people who are literally struggling now 24 7 to function on a basic level. Many people have died of cancers many people are falling ill with the 5G rollout it will only get worse. So Milham was especially interested in measuring the ambient levels of, particular, of a particular kind of electromagnetic frequency, a relatively new suspected carcinogen known as high frequency voltage transients or dirty electricity. Transients are largely byproducts of modern energy efficient electronics and appliances from computers, refrigerators, and plasma TVs to compact fluorescent light bulbs and dimmer switches which tamp down the electricity. It's a manipulation of current of currents of current creates a wildly fluctuating and potentially dangerous electromagnetic field that not only radiates into the immediate environment but also can back up along home or office wires, wiring, all the way to the utility. Milham went to the school to take readings and he was astonished to find that the classroom's surges of transient pollution exceeded his meter's ability to gauge them. So he then told the teachers that they had to file a complaint with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. 
Now that is just dirty electricity. You think about the Wi-Fi that teachers, staffers in these schools, and the children who are far more susceptible because their brains are still developing. They're sitting in toxic environments. Not one, not one of them has this firewall protection from these frequencies. Now, there may be many children and teachers and staffers who don't have symptoms yet. Yet. But eventually, people do cross that line and become symptomatic. And many children in these schools are experiencing symptoms caused by the frequencies that they are literally imprisoned in, having to go to school Monday through Friday, sit in these classrooms from like 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock. They're, they're literally being fried by these frequencies. And many children are, well, we have now, cancer has become the number one killer of children. Is that Am I correct in saying that? I believe I am. What we are doing to these children in particular, in, in particular, it, it's just, oh wow. It's a wow. I, I, it's so horrible. It, it's so immoral. It's so tragic. And many in our government Many in the telecommunications industry, they know, they know how dangerous this is. So the final analysis reported by Milham, cumulative exposure to transients in the school increased the likelihood a teacher would develop cancer by 64%. A single year of working in the building raised the risk by 21% and the risk for young students was probably even greater. So, uh, th this is NBC News. The case against electromagnetic frequencies, cancer and electricity. And NBC News is reporting several developments have highlighted the growing hazards of electromagnetic frequency pollution and the crucial need to address them. The evidence showing harm is overwhelming. And here is where they cite the Bioinitiative Working Group. And I will link below to the Bioinitiative Report, where they, you have here on the side, Research Summaries. Click on that link. And here are the PDFs to the research summaries. Over 2,000 studies show the health effects of Wi-Fi, of the frequencies coming from cell towers and your cell phones and your Wi-Fi in your home and your smart meters. And even, unfortunately, now your appliances, we are heading into the Internet of Things, that, that world where everything will be connected wirelessly. So, in 2007, the Bioinitiative Working Group, an international collaboration of prestigious scientists and public health policy experts, from the United States, from Sweden, from Denmark, from Austria, from China, released a 650-page report citing more than 2,000 studies, many very recent, that detail the toxic effects of electromagnetic frequencies from all sources. Isn't it interesting? NBC News, right here, reporting how dangerous these frequencies are. And today, they would call these scientists just um, 
they're the nuts. They're the crazy people. They're the crazy scientists. Get rid of them. They would discredit them. Chronic exposure to even low-level radiation, like that from cell phones, the scientists concluded can cause a variety of cancers, impair immunity, and contribute to Alzheimer's disease and dementia, heart disease, and many other ailments. We now have a critical mass of evidence, and it gets stronger every day, says David Carpenter, a doctor, director of the Institute for Health and the Environment at the University of Albany, and co-author of the public health chapters of the Bioinitiative Report. And this is David Carpenter. I'm David Carpenter. I'm a public health physician. I graduated from Harvard Medical School, and I worked for the New York State Department of Health for 18 years. During that period of time, I was responsible for administering a program in electromagnetic fields. I subsequently became the dean of the School of Public Health, and uh, presently I'm a faculty member in the School of Public Health and the director of the Institute for Health and the Environment at the University of Auburn. Thank you. And Central Maine Power says there is no reason to be concerned about smart meters. There are no health effects, and everyone who's worried about health effects of RF from smart meters or from the mesh network uh, really has nothing to be concerned about. And what do you say to that? I say that's absolutely false. Uh, the question to ask them is, what is the evidence that smart meters are safe and have no adverse health effects? And the answer to that question is that there is no such evidence. And in fact, while no one has actually done human health studies, in relation to people living in homes with smart meters. We have evidence from a whole variety of other sources of radio frequency exposure that demonstrates convincingly and consistently that exposure to radio frequency radiation at elevated levels for long periods of time increases the risk of cancer, increases the damage to the nervous system, causes electrosensitivity, has adverse reproductive uh, effects and a variety of other uh, effects on on different organ systems. So there is no reason for the, no justification for the statement that smart meters have no adverse health effects. So no justification from the health departments to say that the smart meters have no health effects. Now, it is very upsetting when you are someone who is sensitive to these frequencies and you hear from so many subscribers who were fine years ago they were asymptomatic years ago and now they are symptomatic and you hear from so many people who are really struggling now this is this is a lie from our telecommunications industry and our government officials and our health departments. It is a lie that is so incomprehensible how anybody could involve themselves in this kind of deceit when more and more people every single day are getting sick from these frequencies, from the products that these companies are selling and they say nothing. You want to talk greed? It is a, a sickness. But we also know that there is a depopulation agenda, so, all right. Fears about the hazard, hazards of cell phones seem justified. Every single study of brain tumors that looks at 10 or more years of use shows an increased risk of brain cancer. And that comes from Cindy Sage, co-editor of the Bioinitiative Report. A recent study from Sweden is particularly frightening, suggesting that if you started using a cell phone as a teen, you have a five times greater risk of brain cancer than those who started as an adult. Why? Because the teenage years and anyone younger their skulls 
are it, it's they're not completely formed so their skulls are weaker than the adult skull and the frequencies penetrate into the skulls of our young faster and easier so other countries are revising exposure standards wow in the past two years alone France Germany and England have dismantled wireless networks and schools and public libraries and other countries are pressing to follow suit Israel has banned the placement of cellular antennae antenna on residences and Russian officials have advised against cell phone use for children under 18 years of age the European Union which has led the way on electromagnetic frequency investigations are moving quickly to protect their citizens particularly children and pregnant women unfortunately this was back in 2010 and many of the countries within the European Union you will see uh, well Italy and France they have taken Wi-Fi out of their elementary schools but the rollout of 5G is happening in European countries as well it's happening all over the world a history of harmful effects until Edison's harnessing of electricity humans only source of electromagnetic frequency exposure were the Earth's static magnetic field cosmic rays from the Sun and outer space we adapted to those solar electromagnetic frequencies by developing protective pigment but we have no protection against other electromagnetic frequencies that coming from Andrew Marino a pioneer in bioelectromagnetics who has done extensive electromagnetic research also a professor in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Louisiana State Health Science Sciences Center and he asked how quickly can we adapt our biology to these new exposures well we can't that's why so many people are getting sick and dying research into the hazards of electromagnetic frequencies has been extensive the Russians first noticed during World War II that radar operators often came down with symptoms we now attribute to electro electrical hypersensitive hypersensitivity syndrome sorry in the 1960s during the height of the Cold War the Russians secretly secretly bombarded the US Embassy in Moscow with microwave radiation sickening American employees and one of those um, employees at this US Embassy in Moscow he came out as a whistleblower and said that he was diagnosed with cancer along with others who were working in the embassy it's radio wave sickness microwave sickness and is now a commonly accepted diagnose where because I try to talk to my doctor, others have tried to talk to their doctors, and they there are so few that recognize. But those doctors that know how dangerous, you can find them on YouTube. So many have been screaming about how dangerous these frequencies are, and we get nowhere because our government really doesn't have very much control over the FCC and that we will get into in another video um, so you can pause the video and read the highlights 
that I have here. And they talk about the transients and the, that the the electricity that is fluctuating and modulating and getting caught on your home or office wires delivering you these dirty um, this dirty electricity that is also very harmful so it's not just Wi-Fi the wireless technology that we are using now but here uh, NBC News absent prudent safety standards from both public officials and manufacturers adding a protective filter would add five cents to the cost of making um, a CL, uh, CFL, which I'm not sure what that is. It would cost five dollars for a laptop. Well, the manufacturers never did that, and we still do not have any change in the safety standards coming out of the FCC. They are still using standards decades old decades old and our environment has radically changed with this Wi-Fi something is wrong with that that they're still using standards back from 1996 so NBC News here is saying practice what is known in Europe as the precautionary principle precautionary principle it has it, it's just not practice no, nobody even thinks about hey we should take precautions in terms of changing our environment radically we just don't do that and you will learn that the safety of cell phones was never tested and in my next video you will hear a former FCC chairman talk about the rollout of 5G and how we're not even going to test it for safety. He literally says that. We're just rolling it out. So you can have these people who are the authorities and so many people are unfortunately uh, their brains just don't work in terms of using their brain for themselves. Their brains are hardwired to allow the authority figures to speak for them. And you have, you have Americans being told by the FCC chairman himself at the time we're not even going to do any safety tests we're just going to roll it out and there's no outcry our brains have changed the, the collective brain has changed to just accept whatever it is no one even questions and so much today begs questions but NBC says don't expose yourself unnecessarily to electromagnetic frequency hazards don't buy a home next to a Wi-Fi tower good luck with that in eight years we have seen an explosion of cell phone towers and Gwen towers these structures put up everywhere and we see more and more instruments on the cell tower structures as well as Gwen Towers they just add more and more instruments they also say get a corded telephone instead of a cordless one don't let your teenager sleep with a cell phone under her pillow don't use your laptop computer in your lap Treat your electromagnetic frequency emitting device with the same cautious respect 
you would do other invaluable modern devices like your car, which is also dangerous and can kill you. You don't drive in an unnecessarily risky fashion at high speed or while talking on the cell phone, right? Well, a lot of people do. In this country, our research dollars are spent on finding ways to treat disease, not on what causes it, which is to say how we can prevent it. And that's a tragedy. And that coming from Andrew Marino, a doctor. So, um, today you will not find an article like this on mainstream media. And don't be surprised if this gets uh, deleted and put down the memory hole. Mainstream media telling you how dangerous is the environment that you are living in today. I hope that you click on the links below and circulate this information far and wide.